Hey folks, welcome to the Do-It-Yourself Dad channel. I got a little confession, I'm a little bit of a guitar nerd, and with all the videos we've had on the channel so far, I'm kind of surprised that guitars haven't made it into it at some point, but here we are. Um, today we are taking a, this is a Stratocaster, a Fender Stratocaster copy, and we are going to be making this thing play a whole lot better. This is one of the really cheap guitars. This thing, I picked it up on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. It came with a guitar, a guitar stand, and an amp. Um, paid 20 bucks for the whole thing. Now, when I looked it up retail on these, these things are going new between like 80 and 100 bucks or so, so it's still not a very expensive guitar. Um, but for what you get, I'm pretty impressed for the price, but there's a lot of stuff you can do to one of these inexpensive guitars to make them play a lot better. Now, I'm gonna show you here my Strat and show you the, uh, the comparison between the two, and you notice they're almost identical guitars. Now my Strat looks a little bit different than a completely normal Strat. This one I ordered from the uh, Fender Custom Shop 20 some odd years ago. So it's got a Floyd Rose and a dual humbucker and uh, a little bit different of a fretboard than this. But this is pretty much what a stock Stratocaster is gonna look like. The big difference you'll see up here is the shape of the heads, and I'm sure there's some trademarking in there. And if you held the bodies right up next to each other, the shape's probably just a tad different. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into the garage and I'm gonna show you what you can do. We're gonna start from the neck and work our way to the body. Things that you can do for free to make this thing play a whole lot better. And then a few things that'll just cost you a couple bucks. And we're gonna do with basic tools that you've got around the house, nothing really special. I do wanna show you one other guitar here though. That's this one. This one we built, and there is gonna be a video on the channel showing you how to build your very own guitar from a kit, make your own custom job. Um, if you notice, the paint job here is a little bit of an Eddie Van Halen inspired paint job, but not on a guitar that he would have played with this paint job. It was a different guitar. And I got the whole story about that in that video. So it'll be linked down in the description below if you wanna check out that. But right now let's go out to the garage and get working on this guy. Now the very first thing to think about is your workspace. If you're gonna be working on this on a table or especially on a workbench, I would throw down an old towel just to protect the finish of the guitar. Now this finish, at some point I might redo the whole thing, so this may not matter as much to me. There's a couple dents in here, but it's gonna matter to you probably. So put down a towel first, protect your guitar. The other thing to think about is depending upon the guitar you have, you notice here the neck is sitting up off my workbench. Now that's the case with the Fender style guitars. Now if you get a Gibson, the uh, head here actually angles down and you're gonna wanna support that so you're not putting all the pressure on the head here, if you push down hard, you could snap it. So we're not gonna have to worry about that here with this guitar, but let's start here with the first thing we wanna do is we wanna remove the strings, get down to the guitar and get to work. Now in the case of my guitar here, you can see I got it with a broken string and I am guessing that that's probably part of the reason why the guy sold it. He was messing around trying to get the strings off. He really didn't understand how this thing works and uh, kind of just gave up. So I'm gonna show you how to remove the strings. And there's two ways to do it. One way, obviously, is you can just come in here with clippers and cut all the strings. And that's probably what we're gonna do because we can't reuse these strings. We've got one broken. But if you're on a budget and you're gonna reuse your strings, you're gonna wanna take them off carefully so you can restring it with these things later. So if reusing your strings is the game plan, you're gonna to wanna to unwind your strings and you can start turning these things. Most of them should turn clockwise to loosen, but you can also see on the winder which way it's going and then you can take your strings and just remove them just like so. So you're gonna have the string right there and we'll just go one by one and remove these strings. So now that the string's removed from that end, we're gonna come down to this end and get the strings out of here. Now with the Gibsons, you can just feed the string straight out the back and remove it. And these, you gotta flip it over. So let's flip it over and get the strings out. Now on a normal string change, you probably won't have to remove this because there are these holes, you can pull the strings through the holes, but we are gonna remove it because we have to get into the back anyway. And with all this little stuff in the screws, it's a good idea to get a little container and keep the screws all sorted out so you don't lose stuff. So now with the back plate out of the way, we can get into the back. And this is what they call the trem system. So this is the strings are coming through these holes right here. They go out the other side. And this is also these springs are because you can use a whammy bar to uh, play around with your notes. Uh, and we will be doing a little bit of adjustment on that in a little bit. But right now let's get those strings out. And you can see here, all you gotta do is just give the string a little push and it'll start coming out each side. And you're gonna remove those strings one by one. 
All right, so now with the strings out of the way, we are gonna remove the pick guard on this thing. And the pick guard on these, you just have to remove these outer screws. You're not removing these ones right here. These are the ones that hold the pickups in place. We're just gonna remove the outer screws around the outside to get this pick guard off. So one of the things that separates a high-end guitar from kind of a mid-range guitar is the time that they spent putting it together. Now, things like machining out the body and whatnot, that's all done, you know, CNC robots and whatnot. But a lot of this stuff needs to be done by hand. And with all these, budget is the big concern. So they're not going to spend a lot of time doing all the fine tuning that you would normally do on a higher-end guitar. So you can see here, even with this one, it wasn't really fitted right because this piece the pick guard should not be below the trim system, and it is. So this thing should have been clearanced a little bit more, but they didn't spend the time to do it. And that's one of the first things that uh, I'm running across on this thing. And then opening up the cavity here, I'm noticing something else. There is zero shielding, and let's talk about that for a second. Now, when you're playing a guitar, you sometimes hear that humming sound, and the humming sound is coming from radio interference getting into the control pocket here. And you can see here on my other guitar, I took the time to shield it. And there's a couple things you can do. One of the products you can use is foil tape here. And this stuff works really well. Um, you can pick it up on Amazon for just a couple bucks. This roll would probably do 10 guitars. You can also use something like this. This is a guitar shielding paint. It's got graphite in it. And then the last thing is the easiest thing to use. And you probably have it around your house. It's good old tin foil. So when you hear people talking about wrapping their heads in tinfoil because, you know, the government spy on them with satellites, it's kind of the same idea um, in that we're going to basically shield the entire pocket here with foil, whether it's this stuff, this stuff, or tinfoil, to prevent that 60 cycle hum from coming in and interfering with all of our electronics. So what we need to do is get in here, we're gonna do the back of this plate right here, and then we're gonna do the body of the guitar. Now where this might become a little bit of a challenge is that this thing is attached. You can see here to the guitar, and it's attached here to this. Now, if you're careful, you can get in there and do this whole thing with everything still attached and wired up. I'm gonna take it apart so you can see it a little bit better, but that's not necessary. You can do it without taking anything apart. So you can see here, I got the pick guard out and flipped around and I haven't unsoldered anything. And I might or I might not, just depending upon how much work I gotta do. But I have this thing unscrewed just to give it a little bit more play and you can kind of wiggle it around and flip it. Now you can see here, they did shield from the factory this little area here, which is a good start, but it's not enough. And there's no shielding behind or, or around the pickups. And then the big thing is inside the cavities in the guitar, there's no shielding anywhere. And you can see right there underneath the pickups and then what we call the control pocket there, zero shielding. So we're gonna get in there and do some shielding and uh, I'm gonna do it with the foil tape, but I'm gonna also explain how to do it with tin foil while I'm doing the foil tape method. Now the foil method is as simple as it sounds. You are just gonna take this foil, it's a double-sided tape right here, and you're gonna peel it off and kind of put it in all the cavities. Now this stuff is very thin. You can, uh, it's as thin as aluminum foil or tin foil. So you can put this stuff in your guitar using just regular scissors. And we're just gonna line each one of these pockets. Now it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be pretty because no one's ever gonna see it. The one important thing is making sure that you don't have any gaps where radio can get through. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna do everything and you wanna make sure it's all touching each other. Now, if you're cutting out pieces of foil, you can paint in some Elmer's school glue in there or use contact adhesive and put that in there. The one thing you wanna make sure is that your foil is overlapping in places, so you have connection between all of them. You don't want one piece of foil and another piece of foil being separate. We're gonna go all the way up the sides of each cavity, and then we're gonna loop around the top a little bit in a couple places so it contacts the shielding that we're gonna put on the back of the plate here. Now, one thing that is nice about this foil tape is this foil tape is designed to work with guitars, so, they were so kind as to make it so that the adhesive is conductive. So you don't have to worry about if things are overlapping, if they are getting good connection because the adhesive itself is conductive. I do have a link to this stuff in the description below if you wanna check it out. Like I said, it's not necessary. You can do the exact same thing with foil. Um, this is just a little bit easier to work with. And I wanna say the whole roll cost me about 10 bucks or so. So it's not, it's not a very expensive, investment. And if you're going to be working on guitars, 
this will do a lot of guitars. Like I said, this is, I think the third or fourth guitar that I've shielded with this roll of, of tape, and I still have most of the roll left. Okay, so now with our, all of our pockets lined, we have the foil up on the top. And what we wanna do with that is kinda of go around with a razor and get it in a couple places. You wanna fold the foil up out over the top. And that way, when you put the pick guard on it, which is also gonna have the stuff on it, it's gonna make contact with it and make a nice seal all the way around. When you're done with this, none of this is gonna be seen. It's all gonna be kinda of enclosed underneath that pick guard. You just wanna make sure that if you have a lot of excess foil, it's not going to poke out from underneath the pick guard. And a reference point for those are all these screw holes. If your foil is coming out past the screw holes on the face of the guitar out this way, then you know it's going to be seen. And then you can just trim it back with a razor blade or a pair of scissors. All right, so you can see I got the entire thing shielded and I've got this stuff kind of lipping up over the edge. And now we're going to concentrate on the back side of this guy here. So we're going to flip it over and start running foil around. Now we may have to remove the pickups to get around the pickups really neatly. We'll see how it goes. So I did decide to remove the pickups. I removed the first one. There's two screws and a little springs. And I would recommend you remove them one at a time. That way you don't forget what order they go back in or take a picture. Most of these are gonna be color coded yellow, red, blue, or something like that. So you know which pickups go where. Um, so let's just get in here and start cutting out some foil. And we'll come back in here with our razor blade and trim. And same thing in these holes, we'll come back with the razor blade. All right, so we've got our first pickup hole shielded. Now we can replace our pickup and move on to the next one. All right, so now we've got the pick guard shielded. We've got this area shielded with the factory stuff. We've got the body shielded, but let's not forget the little pocket that the jack goes in. We're gonna shield that guy as well. So in turning our attention to the neck of this guitar, and this is really where the playability lies in one of these guitars and how easy or hard it is to play. Um, you can go and get yourself a tool kit. I picked this one up on Amazon. It was about 20 bucks or so. But like I said in this video, I'm committed to showing you how to do stuff for free. So I'm going to bypass really using this tool kit. I might use a few things in it, but I'm gonna show you how to use stuff around the house if you don't have one of these. These do help, but you don't need it. Now, the couple of things we're going to address here is the fret ends along here and if we get real close in and I'm going to try to focus on these guys you can see this guitar is actually pretty good the fret ends are pretty rounded over they're not sprouting and sprouting means that the uh, metal is coming out of the wood there and the wood seems to have a little bit of a roundness to it but these are kind of when you run your finger over it they are a little bit kind of pointy so we're going to round those over now something you can do if you're going to go more advanced is actually recrowning the frets we're not gonna do that in this video and I'll show leveling the frets. I'll show you real quick what that means, but I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I'll have a link down below if you realize you got a problem. Some other YouTubers, really great videos on how to do that, I'll have those linked below. Now to check to see if your frets are level, you wanna use something like this. This comes with one of those kits, but you can also just use a credit card or any sort of a straight edge. You just wanna be able to go over three sets of frets, and you're gonna rock it back and forth in this motion. If it rocks, it means one of the frets is high and you have to lower it. On this guitar, actually, we got lucky, and we really, I got a tiny bit there, but almost not even worth worrying about. And as you work your way down the guitar, you go to the narrower bits. And there's little bits here and there of high frets, but it's not terrible. So we're not gonna worry about it on this guitar, but like I said, if you do check yours and you got major problems, I will have linked down below another video on how to fix that. Now what we are gonna address here is the fret ends. Now there's a couple ways to do these and I'm gonna do it kind of the quick DIY way, which is the way you'll probably be doing it at home, but there's other ways to do it and that involves using sanding blocks. I got an 800 and a 1000 grit foam sanding block. If you don't have sanding blocks, you can use a piece of sandpaper and wrap it on your finger and just very carefully go over those edges or um, emery boards, you know, the little things for filing your fingernail ends work great as well. You can also use little files if you have an edge that's very high you can get in there with a file and take that sharp edge off so we're going to attack it first with the 800 grit sandpaper and 
what I like to do is go in here at about a 45 degree angle and go slowly up and down the fretboard. Now what this does is it rounds over the fret ends just a little bit, makes them smooth, and it also rounds over the edge of the fretboard, which gives you a really nice feel in the hand. Now I should note that you only want to do this on a rosewood fretboard. If you have a maple fretboard, which will look like this wood, that wood is finished and you don't want to attack that with sandpaper like this. So then you would want to take an emery board and actually go after each one of these very carefully without getting the fretboard itself. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But right now, let's just finish this up. We're going to hit it with 800 grit and then 1000 grit. So now if you look at our fret ends, they are nice and smooth and polished over. If you run your finger along them, they feel great. But you look at the tops, the tops are not so good. Now on this guitar, they're actually not bad. I've seen much worse, but we're going to go ahead and polish at the top of these frets now using a really simple method. And that method would be using a fine grade of steel wool and masking tape. Usually I like to use the blue tape, but I am out of blue tape, so we're going to be using this stuff to show you how I do it. And then I'm going to show you one of the little tools that comes in that kit that makes this job a little bit easier in case you want to go purchase one of those kits. So it's real simple. You're going to protect your fretboard putting a little piece of tape right there on either side of your frets. Now I had mentioned before that if you were doing the fret ends and you had a maple fretboard, there was another method. And that is this method. You would basically tape up both sides of the fret and then you would take that file and just hit the very end right there. So right now we're gonna tape up our fret and go over it with some fine steel wool. Now if when I'm doing this, it looks like I'm holding my hand a little weird. Um, I mangled my right finger surfing yesterday. So that's why my uh, hand is looking a little weird. My finger's kind of up out of the way, but you're going to kind of go over it with steel wool. And I'm going to show you the results in just a second. It's really pretty amazing. So here we go. Just a couple of passes with the steel wool. You can see that fret is nice and polished and smooth and this one, not so much. Now, the reason that that is important is because you're going to be sliding up and down the fretboard, but you're also going to be bending notes. So you're going to hold the string against it and then bend up and down, and if there's grittiness, it's not gonna wanna come with it or you're gonna hear that in your pickups. So we're gonna go all the way down the fretboard, repeating that technique. And to do that, I'm gonna use the little tool that came with the toolkit so you can see how those work. And these are the tools I'm talking about. So instead of having to put tape down, you just put this down over each fret, like so, and you just hold it in place with one hand as you go over the fret with the steel wool with the other hand. And you can see there, it's very easy to just go one fret to the next fret to the next fret. And you can get down the fretboard very quickly doing this. If you're gonna be doing more than one guitar or you're gonna be doing this frequently, it's a not a bad idea to grab some of these things. So now we've polished all the frets and if you can see there, they are very shiny and they were very, very dull before. So now we're gonna address the fretboard itself. You can see the fretboard itself looks very dirty and it also looks really dry. And we're gonna oil this up and clean it up with that oil. Oiling the fretboard only applies to rosewood flat fretboards. Again, if you have a finished fretboard, which means it would be more like this color, you're not gonna oil it. You're just going to go in there and clean it. But this is a wood fretboard and it does need to be oiled. Now, I just use this stuff. Um, old English, you get this stuff for a couple bucks a bottle. You can get it pretty much anywhere. They do have lemon oils that are specifically for fretboards that are sold for guitars and therefore will cost you five times as much as that stuff. I've been using this stuff for pushing 30 years now and never a problem. So let me show you how much life and grain we're gonna see out of this fretboard just by putting on a little bit of oil. And I'm going to do it first just between a couple of the first frets so you can see the dramatic difference this makes. Now look at that difference. That's a uh, oiled and not oiled. You can see how incredibly dry that fretboard is. So we're going to oil the whole thing with lemon oil and let it kind of soak in. We might hit it with a little bit more. And then the very last thing you want to do is go over it with a dry towel to make sure you don't have any excess lemon oil sitting on your fretboard.
So now with the fretboard out of the way, we're gonna turn our attention to these. These are the tuning machines. And if I were to replace one thing on a guitar other than the strings, it would be the tuning machines. At least those are the first things I would replace. These make a big difference in how well your guitar holds tune. Um, but if you're not planning on spending the money, you can at least do a little trick to adjust them. Now with these, you'll notice some of them are a little wobbly and some are not. And one of the things you can do is tighten down the ends here. If you notice that one turns and has a little bit of drag on it and the rest do not, you want to have a little bit of drag on these. So when you turn them, they shouldn't just spin freely right here. Um, so you can go in the end here and tighten up this little end. It puts a little bit more tension on the inner workings of the mechanism in there. You can also remove the caps here because sometimes this little screw in here has become loose. You can give that a little tighten and that'll tighten things up. Now, if you were going to replace them, I would recommend replacing them with something like these. These are locking tuners and there's a couple different styles of these, but the way these work is you feed the string through that little hole and this little piece here on the back unscrews. So you unscrew that, you feed the thing, string through the hole, and then you tighten this down, and it locks that string in place. It means you don't have to wind the string several times around these for it to start tightening up, and that means it stays in tune a lot better because the strings can't slip around. So I'm gonna replace them on this, but like I said, it's not necessary. So you can use these. These are just fine on most guitars. Um, you know, you will have a better time with these. You can pick these up for 20 to 25 bucks. I've got a link down in the description below for these. Just make sure you order the right ones for your guitar because the little mounting hole right here is different on each guitar. The other thing is the hole here itself may be a different size like this. These are not a direct swap in. So you will have to drill out each hole in order to get these to work. And hey, while you're at it, because you're customizing your guitar, you can sand the logo off and sign it yourself or put your own logo on it if you want. And then one other trick to show you is, if you notice, I had removed these things. These are those little string trees, and there is a tall one and a short one. And there's this big debate over whether you even need these, um, and I don't like them. They're kind of a pain. So I sometimes take them off. In this case, usually you have a tall one and then a short one here. There's two holes. I'll oftentimes remove the tall one, move it to the back hole, and then get rid of this one. But hold on to it just in case your strings start slipping out of the nut here. They're easy to replace if you need to. And finally, the other thing you can do is just put the screw from the other one back in there. That way it doesn't look like there's an empty hole in the guitar. There's at least a screw there, so people aren't asking you, hey, what's that hole for? So with our new tuning machines in place, we can string the guitar, but before we do that, we want to address this guy right here. This is called the nut, and the strings ride through this, and when you tune your guitar, you're pulling them tight through it, but also when you're bending notes, you're pulling the string tighter, the string is running in and out of that nut, and it can get caught up in there if there's too much friction, and then your guitar goes out of tune. So right now we are going to lube our nut. <laughs> and we're gonna do that with this, a mechanical pencil. Like I said, you really don't need to buy anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a mechanical pencil here and just draw a little line in each one of those notches. Pencils are made of graphite. Graphite is a lubricant. We'll get it in there real good. Now, if your strings are already on the guitar, no problem. You can just lift the string up and out of the little channel, put some graphite in there, and put it back in place. And we might do that after we put the strings on the guitar. All right, so now let's talk about guitar strings. Now, because we're operating on a beginner guitar, I'm gonna assume most of the people watching this video are beginners. I would recommend going with a lighter string. Now, people will argue for days, and if you wanna argue for days down in the comments below, be my guest over what string diameter is best to be playing. And if you do a Google search, there's a lot of famous musicians, people you probably listen to that play on very thin strings. But 
Thin strings are a little bit easier to play. They're easier to push down. The downside to thin strings, I think the biggest downside, is when you push down, it's easy to push down too hard and bend the note. So it is something to think about, but I would recommend going with a quality set of strings if you are restringing the guitar. If you're trying to save money and you're not gonna restring it, that is totally fine, but I do have a link for um, some of these strings down in the description below. These are kind of the most affordable of the quality strings that you can put on your guitar. So let me show you how we do it on the Fender here. Now, when you open up the pack of strings, the strings are, are color-coded. Your E string is blue, B is yellow, and so on down the line. So you do wanna make sure you put these on in order because each string is a different diameter. You are gonna start with your top string is your thickest string, your bottom string is your thinnest string, and you'll see here the uh, little pieces on the back of each string is color-coded to go along with that to make it easy. So the Fender style guitars are a little bit different than the Gibson ones. The Fenders, like I said earlier, are gonna come in through the back. The Gibson ones generally are gonna go across the top, but they're all gonna string in a pretty similar fashion. So these strings are coiled up and you do kinda wanna be careful with these because if you knot them up, it becomes a big pain. But we're gonna start with our E string, our low string, and that'd be this guy right here. So we're gonna start by feeding our string through the hole and that'll come right out the top of the guitar out the other side, you can see right there, and we're gonna pull that one all the way through. Next string is gonna be our A string. We're gonna repeat the exact same process. And so on. So now with all of our strings pulled through, we can go up to the head and start stringing them in up there. So now we can start pulling in our strings. Now, I'm using these locking tuners and I'm gonna show you how to use these things because I do think they're pretty neat, but you don't need them. With the locking tuners, you're gonna just feed the string through. Run it through the nut right there. And you're gonna pull the string as tight as you possibly can and then tighten down that screw. Now the string is in there, it's locked down and you can tune it. Now, if you don't have the locking tuners, you're gonna do something a little bit different. I'll show you that. You're gonna leave some slack in the string right there and now you're gonna start winding the string. And it'll start turning like that and you're gonna let it kind of turn, hold it into the nut right there and hold the string down so the string winds underneath this piece and you're gonna wind it till it gets tight. Like I said, since we have these locking tuners, we don't have to do that. So we're gonna just pull these things tight, lock them in place and get the guitar in tune. So now with the strings installed on the guitar, we are going to tune it and we're gonna use an app called Guitar Tuna. Um, this is what it looks like here. It's a free app, so you can go ahead and download it. Um, you may have a tuner. If you have an actual tuner, use that. They're gonna be more accurate than a uh, phone tuner, but this is a free option if you don't already have one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put, the, put it as close to the guitar as we can so we can see what's going on. And we're just gonna go string by string and tune up the guitar. Now I tuned it by ear a little bit ago, so let's see how we're doing. I just tuned it off my other guitar. So with the guitar in tune, now we're gonna adjust the height of the tremolo, and that is this little guy here. Now you see the way it's angled up. You want that thing to be pretty much level with the body of the guitar, or maybe a degree or two of up angle. So that's a little bit too much angle. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that. Now let me show you how we do that. We adjust that by flipping it over and tightening up these two screws on the bottom of the guitar. We bring them in, it gives more tension, it pulls that piece down. So let's go ahead and get in there and tighten those screws. When you're tightening them, since there are two screws, you wanna tighten each one equally. You wanna keep them equal in tension between the two. So we gave it a little bit of a tighten. Let's flip her over and see where we're at. It looks like we've still got a little ways to go. So we're gonna give it another extra little, another turn on both sides. So it's sitting a little bit more level, but now we need to retune the guitar because now we've pulled that thing back. The guitar should be tuned a little bit high. So as we retune it, this will drop a little bit more. So let's retune the guitar. So now with the guitar tuned, you can see we're sitting pretty much dead level. So now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is adjusting the truss rod. 
So what the truss rod is, it's a metal rod that runs down the inside of the neck. There's a little hole here that allows you to put an Allen wrench in to tighten it or loosen it. Think of it as a long bolt. Now the strings are always pulling the neck up and the truss rod, as you tighten it, puts tension and brings the neck down. So you can adjust how much bow in the neck you have. Now ideally you want just a tiny bit of bow in this angle. So how we're gonna check that is by holding down our strings here and holding down our strings at this end and then checking and see how much play we have in the string in the middle. Now normally I would use a capo. My capo here just died on me, the elastic snapped. Um, so you could use a friend because you do need at least three hands to do this. You're gonna need a set of fingers here, a set of fingers here, and then a one to check here in the middle. So we're gonna use the bar out of the capo and a clamp. Should work just the same. And if you do this method, you don't have to tighten it down like crazy, just enough to hold the strings down as if you were playing it. Now we're gonna go and hold the strings down on the far end and you can use a measuring tool. I'm gonna use a business card. And if you can slip a business card in between there and it'll clear in the middle of the neck, but doesn't have too much wobble, you're good. And it looks like in this case, I'm surprised. I thought I was going to do some adjustments. We're good. So we don't actually have to adjust the truss rod. Now, if we had to adjust the truss rod, what you want to do is come into the end. You want to release the tension on the strings. And you're going to come into the end here. I'll show you. You're going to insert an Allen wrench into the end there and give a quarter turn. Now, if we want to bring the neck down, you're going to give it a quarter turn to the right. If you want to bring the neck up, a quarter turn to the left. And you usually want to loosen up the strings so you can get it in there and then retune it every quarter turn, recheck it. It doesn't take a lot to get it right. And it also could settle over a couple days. So you could have it all set and then a couple days later, it's not good anymore. Um, and you're going to have to redo it a couple times. But that's where you're going to go and make that adjustment right in there. Remember, little, little amounts is all you need. And if you're trying to tighten it and it's sticking, try to loosen it first because you don't wanna snap that rod inside there if it's bound up. Now with our neck straight, we're gonna set our action and our action is how high the strings are sitting off of the frets. Now that right there is a very high action. I don't like guitars with high action, they're harder to play. I like actually a very low action, sometimes lower than even what is kind of recommended. And the way you adjust the action height is down here on the trim system. You can see here there's little Allen screws on the top of each one of these, and you can individually adjust the height of each string. And you do need to individually adjust them because the neck here is radius, meaning there's an arc to it, and you want each one of them at the right height. So we're gonna grab a ruler and go and start setting the height of each string. Now how you're gonna measure your action height is you're gonna measure the distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string on the 12th fret. And the 12th fret you can count up from the neck or you can also just, it's one of the two dots, it's gonna be the one just past it. Now the way you measure it is on the high E string here, you are gonna measure one six millimeters or one sixteenth of an inch on the high E string, that's your distance. And on the low string here, you wanna get it about 2.4 millimeter or 332nd. Um, so let's get in here and measure and see where we're at right now. So yeah, we're up around four. So we're almost double where we wanna be. So we're gonna come down to the bottom and we are gonna loosen the height of the string here a little bit at a time until we get it to the right height. And then we're gonna work our way across. Okay, so now with the string height set, we got our last adjustment and then we get to go play it. I promise this is all gonna be worth it. And our last adjustment is the intonation. And the intonation is basically the string length. So we're gonna be lengthening and shortening the strings here. And the reason you do that is because you wanna make sure that an E here is also an E here. This is one octave higher. So we're gonna be adjusting those to make sure that the guitar is completely in tune. So let's get started on that. Now for this exercise, I'm actually gonna be using a tuner and not my phone. And that's for two reasons. These are more accurate, but also my phone, you have to pay a little bit extra to get the actual tuning feature versus just going off strings. So we're gonna play an E here. We're gonna make sure it's perfectly in tune and then we're gonna play an E here. And my tuner is actually telling me it's dead on. So let's move on to the next string. The next string is our B string. Um. 
So now let's move on to our next string. Our next string is going to be our A string. Okay, so our A is dead on. Now let's go up here. And A is a little bit flat. So what we need to do is come down here to the end and adjust that a little bit. So the note being flat means, it means the note is a little bit low. So what we need to do is shorten the length of the string. And how we're going to do that is by taking our screwdriver and going right into the end here and seating it into the screw and giving it a couple turns. And we're going to do about a half a turn at a time. So we've done a half a turn, and then we're going to come back over to our neck. Check that open note. And it's going to be a little out of tune now because we changed the length of that, so we're going to retune it down here. And then we're going to check up here. And it brought it almost perfect. So we're going to do a few more adjustments on that. So just remember, every time you go back and forth, you have to retune the guitar and recheck it. And remember, if the note is flat, you need to make the string shorter by tightening that screw on that end and making the string shorter or vice versa and going longer. And go all the way down the neck until you've set your intonation for every string. Then your guitar will be perfectly in tune all the way down here at the nut and then all the way up here on the fretboard. All right, now with the intonation all set, we can clean the last thing up, which would just be going down here if you want, and clipping those strings. You don't need one of those suckers poking you in the face. So we're going to grab a clipper real quick, get those nice and short and clean, and then let's go inside and give her a go. Okay, so we're back inside. We're all tuned up. We've gone through the whole thing. Now let's go over what we did before we plug this thing in and listen to it. So we have gone and taken the pick guard off. We shielded the entire cavity. We took the strings off. In our case, we put on new strings, but like I said, you don't need to if you're on a real tight budget, um, but strings are five bucks, eight bucks, somewhere in that range, and probably one of the biggest upgrades you can make to one of these cheap guitars. So I'd really recommend doing that. And if you're going to do it and you're a beginner, go with lighter strings. I've got some links down below you can check out. You don't need to buy them through my links. You can go to your local guitar store. I encourage you to do that. Uh, support your local guitar store. But um, new strings are a definite plus. We put those locking tuners on the back here. Again, not necessary, but probably one of the other biggest things you can do to improve one of these guitars. So let's plug her in. Let's give her a listen. <coughs> So how do you think she played? I think she did pretty darn good. I think we breathed a little bit of new life into this old, inexpensive, kind of cheapy guitar. When I first got it, it played real crummy. The action was way too high, uh, the fretboard was pretty gnarly, and it had a ton of buzz when we plugged it into the amps. So we breathed some new life into this guitar, made it a lot better, and uh, this will make a good extra guitar for me. Now, if you want to check out the video where we build this guy, I'm gonna have that thing linked in the description below. This video is gonna be coming out after that one, so if you don't see it, it's on the way. So be sure to hit that subscribe button because we'll have this one coming up on the channel real soon. And of course, 
Thanks for watching. Now remember, I do have links to any of the stuff we talked about today in the description below, but like I said, you probably don't need to buy anything. You can do all this with stuff you've got around the house, or you might be able to jam down to the dollar store and get some emery boards. So hopefully you can do this for real cheap. Hopefully this video helped you out. Let me know down in the comments uh, what, you, what kind of stuff you're working on. If you got any questions about this or if there's things you think I missed, be sure to let me know um, because we can help each other out down in the comments. Thanks for watching.